Hello and welcome back to Paul Accent Maker, your professional accent coach. Today I'm recording the film about the topic you, my audience, requested yourself and it concerns the topic of motivation. And by the way guys, it's not motivation like in Polish motivacja, but it's mo, motivation, you need to round it, mo, like ho ho ho, mo mo mo, motivation. So how do I get motivated? Which motivational hints do I find useful? Let's find out. Number one, type of your motivation. So well, I think that the most important thing is to understand how you actually operate and which kind of motivation is the best one for you. Are you this rare one that takes the motivation inside from your inner self? Or perhaps you need some external stimulation and stimuli to help you? Please be honest with yourself, because I think this is the most important part. Decide what you want to achieve and in which way. Will you really manage to do it yourself, on your own, without any external help? Are you sure about it? Because maybe it would be way easier if you had a trainer, coach, motivator, maybe a friend, maybe some other companion, or maybe a group in order to feel the different dynamics of it. Which way do you feel best? Completely on your own? Or with some company? And then depending on it, decide which part of your goals can be achieved truly and solely on your own and for which you need some external help or company. Maybe a trainer, maybe a teacher, maybe some friend. If you know it, it will be way easier and you will feel relieved that there is no pressure on you anymore. It's not any failure or embarrassment to admit that you need an external help. There are such people whose job is to be there and help you they will be delighted that they will be able to assist you and guide you in case you can't do it on your own. Or you can do it, but with them, you would do it way easier, way more efficient and simply successful. Two, know the difference between I need and I want. This is something I've talked already in my film about New Year's resolutions. You can find a link to this film below. An extremely crucial factor is knowing the difference between what your brain, body and truly yourself need and what you want because these two might not be the same. Sometimes what is more important for you is following this what you need, what your body needs, what your brain needs and then placing a second priority, this what you want. Make sure you know the difference and you put your needs first. Number three. Talk to yourself in the second person. Well, it's a very interesting piece of advice. It's a very simple but extremely powerful technique. So instead of saying to yourself, I need to get motivated, I need to get mobilized and get up, imagine that you are talking to yourself as if you were your mother, trainer, friend, and use your first name. So if your name is Joanna, Say to yourself, Joanna, you need to get mobilized. Joanna, you need to get up, you need to do it. I know you can do it because you are the best and I believe in you and you can do it. You, not I, saying you can do it is always a way more powerful than saying I can do it. If your only discourse is saying I, I need to, I have to, you are somehow overwhelmed by the power of this I need, I have, I must and you feel actually quite lonely with it. Whereas when you try to speak to yourself as if you were talking to your best friend, who I hope you actually really are, then you feel as if there were like two of you. You and this Joanna you are talking to. So you're already a team, there are two of you, not only one. It's way easier and way more helpful. It's also psychologically and scientifically proved that such talk helps and many really powerful and efficient, highly efficient people use this technique. Another interesting technique is talking to you in the third person. So imagine that you are talking to 
somebody else as if you were describing their behavior. So instead of saying, why am I so upset? Why am I so confused? Ask yourself a question, if your name is Joanna, why is Joanna so upset? Why is she so stressed? Maybe there is something she needs. Maybe there is something she lacks. Because this Joanna addressing herself in the third person is less emotionally reactive than when she talks to herself in the first person, so the way we normally talk to ourselves. Talking about somebody else, somebody else, requires also much less of emotional effort than when we are very wired and very angry with ourselves or frustrated and then we use and waste a lot of unnecessary energy. It's also scientifically proved that the simple act of silently talking to yourself in the third person helps you to balance you out, to calm down and to control your emotions. And you do it then without any unnecessary stress, mental effort or anger. When you think, why is Joanna reacting in such a strange way? You might start wondering, Joanna needs to be appreciated. She is perhaps tired. She's a perfectionist, so that's the way she is. We need to find more empathy towards other people than towards ourselves. That's why when you change I into her, it will give you this distance that we very often lack. To put it simply, it's easier then to get a grip, be less stressed and be more efficient. Number four, visualize yourself during the process of doing the thing. Many coaches do advise you to focus on visualizing yourself after achieving the goal, after you succeed, to feel how it is afterwards, this feeling of completion, accomplishment and achievement. I personally think it might not be enough. What I find extremely or equally important is to visualize yourself during the process of creating the project, thing, doing something, reaching your goal, performing particular action. So you need to see yourself in this particular action, see how you do it, how you start it, how you continue, how you fall, how you get up, how you continue and struggle and fight regardless and how fantastic it feels. You need to see yourself going through all these stages so that you can be somehow emotionally prepared for it. That when it really happens, then you feel as if you actually have already experienced it before, so you know how it feels and you know that you can do it. So if your goal is to go to the gym, then in my opinion, instead of only and solely imagining the feeling after the workout, so how happy and blessed and fantastic you are that you made it, in my opinion, you should firstly visualize the moment of packing your bag. Yeah, I know, very trivial, very, very banal thing. Packing your bag, dressing up, getting out of the apartment, which very often is the most difficult and challenging thing, then getting to the gym, stepping on a treadmill, walking, power walking enthusiastically, and then feeling that you are there and you are ready to take the action. In my opinion, such visualization is way more efficient than visualizing yourself after having completed the mission, because very often the problem is just to start, just to get out, just to get a grip, just to do something, very often make this most difficult first step. If visualizing yourself doesn't really help you, then maybe you should look at other people who made it, other people who accomplished just what they wanted. Maybe success of other people will motivate you more than the potential success of yours. You can check the stories on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, look at the pictures and get anyhow inspired by their achievements. Maybe this way it will be more helpful. Personally, for me, such technique doesn't really help because I don't like to compare myself with other people. I prefer to, to compete with myself, with my previous self, as I think I am my main competition. But I know that there are many, many people who find it extremely helpful. Number five, connect your new habits to the already existing one. It's always difficult to develop a totally new habit completely from scratch. So use the ones that you already have because there are more of them than you think. And I will give you my personal example. So a couple of years ago, I had a very stupid and healthy habit of 
somehow forgetting to take off my contact lenses and as a result I would fall asleep still wearing them. It was very unhygienic, it was very unhealthy and it was simply very stupid, I know. Oh well, this is how it was. And when I finally developed some serious eye issues, then I started to think that I really need to change it right away. But it's very difficult to change right away something you are completely not used to. So I started to think which habit I already have that I could use and somehow connect with the new one of taking off my lenses. And it turned out that there were many of them. For example, a very simple thing, brushing my teeth. I would usually brush my teeth first and then go still in my lenses to bed to read a book or to watch something. I'm short-sighted, I'm minus eight. Cheers to all the short-sighted people out there. So it's relatively difficult for me to wear glasses. It's way more convenient, comfortable to wear lenses. And then very often I was already there, like comfortably just tucked and settled and propped by my pillows, I would simply fall asleep. So what I did is I decided to change this habit, brush my teeth right afterwards, take off my lenses, start to develop some particular new affinity for my glasses. Actually, uh, as you can see, this affinity is even exposed here. Although this is not like minus eight, this is just, just something much smaller. But at home I have such thick ones. And I simply started to become friends with these thick glasses. And after around two weeks, my new habit was already there. Or another example. I knew that I was supposed to do some stretching exercises because after many hours of like sitting at my desk, working with clients, I had some pain. But it was so difficult to get motivated to start exercising, especially after work. So what I added was some simple stretching and relaxing and breathing techniques that were connected with my already existing habits of lighting up the candles and listening to music. It was quite simple. So think which habit you already have, which one is deeply rooted there, and just connect something new to the already existing one. It will be way, way easier. Number six, never underestimate the power of baby steps. Perhaps you know the saying that you can't eat the elephant all at once. You need to cut it into teeny tiny pieces, so simply teeny tiny steps. In your case, teeny tiny action steps. However, what to do when you don't feel like even taking those teeny tiny baby steps? Well, then you can use the technique that I call a 10 minute technique. So when you are supposed to do something, you lie in your bed, and you know that you should get a grip, brace yourself, be motivated and do this very thing, just say to yourself, okay, only 10 minutes. I will do it, but just for 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, I'm just stopping, I'm continuing watching my series, I'm going to bed, whatever. 10 minutes, you can even set the alarm. And when you do it, what might and most probably will turn out is that these 10 minutes were the crucial, critical moment after which you will be definitely more inclined to do this, which you're actually supposed to do, because as always, the most difficult thing is just to start. And also when you give yourself this kind of permission of just stopping, knowing that there is this possibility of stopping after 10 minutes, you will feel better with yourself and most probably the energy and motivation to do this, which you were supposed to do, will be much bigger. Number seven, and the last but not least, learn to let go. It's normal that sometimes we all feel tired, exhausted, we don't feel like doing something, we are even lazy, it's absolutely normal, it's human. Sometimes it's just better to stop fighting, beating yourself up, criticizing yourself and being so demanding towards yourself no, sometimes it's better just to let go and learn how to be lenient towards yourself, how to be more tolerant. We learn how to be tolerant towards so many other people, but sometimes the biggest tolerance we need to learn is exactly the one towards ourselves. So maybe instead of nagging yourself, you should show yourself some self-love and understanding, because very often these are the key missing points to achieve this what you want. You need to feel that you are connected with yourself. 
you know your needs, you have big self-awareness and self-love. So learn to let go. We're only humans, much as we'd like to be sometimes robots. Thank you for watching yet another episode of Motivational Paul Axemaker. I hope you liked this film and found it useful and helpful. If you did, please share some comment with me. Please remember about the subscription and following me on my social media. See you next time. Goodbye.